Why? She's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. Harry Potter is a classic film franchise that's still adored to this day. But even the most successful franchises have a few hilarious flubs. We've compiled a list of our favorite ones. But Hagrid, there must be a mistake. Number one, let's talk Quidditch. There are a lot of things to poke fun at when it comes to Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone's Quidditch match, but this one in particular we can't help but point out. During the match, we find out later that Professor Quirrell is putting a curse on Harry's broomstick, causing him to flail about. When Harry nearly falls off his broom, he's obviously hanging on for dear life. What we end up noticing here are the red wires that come out of his sweater and attach to the broom. Just a bit of movie magic. He's jinxing the broom! Jinxing the broom? What'd we do? Number two, the most famous line was actually improvised. In the Chamber of Secrets scene, Malfoy approaches Crabbe and Goyle, who are actually Harry and Ron in disguise after drinking a potion that allowed them to change their appearance. Harry is still wearing his glasses, so Malfoy asks, Why are you wearing glasses? This is where the line comes in. When Harry tells him he was reading, Tom Felton actually forgot his line here and threw out this one as a filler. Reading? Mm -hmm. I didn't know you could read. It ended up working out smoothly as they ended up keeping it in the film. Bravo, Tom. Saint Potter. Number three, Emma Watson really wanted to do a good job on her first movie. She was nine years old when she landed the role of Hermione Granger and she didn't want to screw it up. So intensely, in fact, that she not only learned all of her lines, but the lines of her other castmates as well. If you closely watch the scene near the end where Hermione, Harry, and Ron visit Hagrid after exams, you'll notice Emma Watson mouthing Daniel Radcliffe's lines. Wander around with dragon eggs in their pocket. Why didn't I see it before? Apparently, she did it quite often throughout the film and would even get in trouble for it. If all Snape wants is the Sorcerer's Stone, why did he try and kill you during the Quidditch match? Number four. A funny little editing flub. In Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry is faced with a dangerous task of rescuing Ron from the Great Lake. He ends up heroically saving both Ron and another young girl from peril, finishing second to last. The mistake that we noticed was when Hermione approaches Harry and places a third towel around his neck, and then, right at the end when it pans out, the towel ends up back around Hermione's neck. It's giving… magic? Number five, maybe Voldemort has a thing against hair. Harry, this is Professor Quirrell. He'll be your defense against the dark arts, teacher. So throughout the entirety of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Professor Quirrell's sideburns are visible just beneath his turban. Thought you ought to know. <laughs> this is something that can be easily overlooked, as we're not supposed to be paying close attention to the professor, as he's flying under the radar as Lord Voldemort's piggyback. Though, in the end, when it's revealed that Voldemort is hanging out on the back of his head, he's completely bald. Voldemort. Yes, you see what I've become. Number six. Notably, he could have gotten up, but why would he? Gryffindor! In the scene after Harry gets sorted into Gryffindor, he takes his seat next to Ron. Soon after, when the feast begins, it shows Harry sitting between Hermione and Percy. Perhaps these scenes were shot on two different days and he simply forgot where he was seated. But either way, it's definitely a pretty funny continuity error. Number seven. We're pretty sure he doesn't even go here. Scared Potter. You wish. This Chamber of Secrets scene is not only important because it reveals Harry as a parcel tongue, but it's also hilariously important because of the major flub the fans caught on camera. Right after Harry blasts Draco to the ground with a spell, you can see one of the cameraman standing in the crowd of kids. Not quite sure how they missed that in post-production, but I'm kinda glad they did. Number eight, more like the cloak of green screen. Obviously, to achieve the cloak of invisibility's effect on screen, it makes sense that the filmmakers would utilize a green screen. If you look closely at the scene where Harry wakes up Ron in the middle of the night, there's something you've got to see, now come on! Check out the mirror of Erised, you can see the green fabric of the invisibility cloak on the floor. I only see us. Looking properly, go on, stand there. Number nine, this one is easy to miss. The chosen outfits in this scene are not only supposed to be fashionable, but functional. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, when Harry and Hermione go back in time and are hiding in Hagrid's garden, for a few moments you're actually able to see the mic packs that are discreetly hidden underneath their jackets. Did you catch that one on your first watch through? Is that really what my hair looks like from the back? Number 10. Did you know he has his mother's eyes? We're told time and time again that he looks just like his father. Except your eye. Yeah, my mother's eyes. <laughs> 
Though, naturally, fans have noticed that not only do Daniel Radcliffe's eyes not really resemble the actors used to portray his late mother Lily, but the color is also different. Her eyes were depicted as brown and his are clearly blue. It's not necessarily the biggest deal, but considering how often it was mentioned that he had his mother's eyes, you'd think they'd given the girl some blue contacts. You have your mother's eyes. Number 11. Just a small outfit goof up. We're not going to get into the fact that Snape's memories of Lily would mean that he would have had to be present for that. Even though nowhere in the books or movies does it mention his presence, what we are going to mention is the fact that when Lily first gets hit with the curse, she's wearing a maroon sweater. But when Snape is holding her, she's wearing a blue shirt. We guess Snape could be misremembering, but still. Always. Number 12. Snakes are just fast. At the end of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, a Voldemort snake Nagini attacks Harry, Ron, and Hermione from the staircase. But then soon after, it cuts back and the snake is now on flat ground. This actually happens quite a few times throughout the scene where the snake is in one spot and miraculously becomes closer or even in a completely different location. It seems like no one really knows where the snake was supposed to be placed throughout this scene's entirety. It will always pass. Ah! Number 13. We imagine broomsticks don't usually come with metal seats. Stay in formation, everyone. Don't break ranks if one of us is killed. Notably, the flying scenes were one of the most uncomfortable scenes for the actors to film. They were usually always left with sore butts. To make the scene more comfortable for them, they were given seats on top of the broomsticks that were supposed to be cut out in post. In quite a few moments in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, you can see Harry's seat as he flies through the air. Number 14. Let's talk about Dumbledore's fall. Shivers. Before Professor Snape uses the famous about a <laughs> on Dumbledore, causing him to fall off the tower into his demise, there is a safety rail right behind him. For some reason, though, when Dumbledore actually takes his fall, the safety rail is gone. <laughs> Number 15. What exactly is this spell supposed to do? Everybody see me. Can you all hear me? First introduced in the Chamber of Secrets, Expelliarmus is introduced as a spell to disarm your opponent, but it rarely does just that. Expelliarmus. Being Harry's favorite spell, we've seen it used countless times. Expelliarmus. Even a few times where it actually does disarm his opponent. But the inconsistencies of what the spell is actually supposed to do are hard to ignore. What do you think? Is it meant to disarm or meant to do actual harm? How's theory supposed to prepare us for what's out there? So, what do you think? Were you able to catch these bloopers and little mistakes when you first watched the films? What were some others that you think should have been included? Let us know in the comments! And make sure to like and subscribe to The Things!